This short tutorial introduces the silhouette sign, one of the most important diagnostic signs used in radiology. The silhouette sign is defined as the absence of the depiction of the anatomic soft tissue border resulting from the juxtaposition of structures of similar radiographic density. It can also mean the absence of a normal silhouette. A positive silhouette sign is not always indicative of disease. To illustrate this concept by analogy, here there are four shapes, a square, a triangle, and two semicircles all the same color. When the shapes are adjacent, they appear to form one large shape, sharing a common outer border. However, simply change the color of one of the shapes and it is easy to see there are four separate shapes adjacent but distinct. The same principle applies when viewing a chest x-ray. Any adjacent organs, lesions, or structures having the same radiographic density or attenuation will form a common silhouette. The organs of the thoracic cavity comprising the mediastinum share a similar radiographic density. The heart and its great vessels, the esophagus and trachea of the central chest, and their borders blend to form a characteristic central silhouette on the radiograph. This schematic depicts the central silhouette formed by the mediastinum. Notice the large bump coming off the left side of the mediastinum, part of the classic silhouette border. However, if the bump had a different density to the rest of the mediastinum, or was not actually touching the mediastinal border, that bump would then become something of interest and need to be explained. Likewise, whenever something has the same density or attenuation as the mediastinum, and is touching the mediastinum, then one must rely on pattern recognition of the normal shape, size, and contours to detect the abnormality of the silhouette. Shown in this schematic diagram of the chest are the margins of the inflated lung and the pleural cavity, the medial heads of the clavicles, and the central silhouette including the heart and the great vessels. Shown in this coronal section of the chest are the pleural cavity and the inflated lungs, the central silhouette that includes the heart and the great vessels, and the brachiocephalic vessels coming down from the neck and the arm on both sides of the chest. The clavicles would appear here in a radiograph or in a coronal section that was farther forward or more anterior. Notice also how the right atrium forms a part of the patient's right heart border, how the left ventricle forms a portion of the patient's left heart border, and the location where the ascending aorta comes up. Also recognize the relative location of the aortic knob or arch and the pulmonary artery. In the normal posterior anterior and lateral chest x-ray films, some of the same structures appear the inflated lung and pleural cavity, the medial heads of the clavicle, and the central silhouette which includes the heart and the great vessels. Also shown is the knob of the aorta where the descending aorta is clearly visible behind the heart as is the area of the left main pulmonary artery. In the mediastinum, Notice the small bulge in the contour made by the main pulmonary artery or pulmonary outflow tract. There is an indentation between the aortic knob and the pulmonary outflow tract called the aortical pulmonary window or aortical pulmonary notch. The normal concavity of this aortical pulmonary window is part of the classic mediastinal silhouette and, when obliterated, needs to be explained. Lymphadenopathy, lung cancer, and vascular masses are common in this location. Going back to the schematic, note the same structures. The aortic knob, the pulmonary outflow tract, and the normal concavity or indentation of the aortical pulmonary notch or window. The cardiophrenic angle between the heart and the diaphragm and both the right and the left costophrenic angles between the diaphragm and the rib cage. If there are lesions in these locations, they change the opacity seen in the chest film and may silhouette out the normal diaphragm or the normal heart borders. 
the classic silhouette of the aortic knob and the pulmonary artery are additional key items to watch for and if the normal concavity of the aortical pulmonary window or notch is obliterated further investigation is warranted usually by getting a CT scan this first case example is a 22 year old active duty woman smoker with chronic persistent cough and scattered wheezes she has no other significant past medical history or family history. On the frontal chest radiograph, there is a bulge coming off the left mediastinum in the area where the concavity of the aortic pulmonary window is expected. A little bit of the aortic knob can be seen, and the normal left ventricle and right atrial contours can be seen. However, the pulmonary outflow tract cannot be seen. Therefore, the bulge coming off of the left mediastinum needs to be explained. Here is an illustration showing what is seen on the actual radiograph. There is a positive silhouette sign involving the left mediastinum in the area of the aortical pulmonary window. The lesion is probably anterior because it is obliterating the main pulmonary artery, which is an anterior structure. At the same time, the normal descending thoracic aorta can be observed, which is posterior to the lesion. The mass produces a convexity and obliterates the normal contour of the right pulmonary artery, and thus needs to be explained. From the lateral view, in place of the normal retrosternal clear space, there is a soft tissue mass with a couple of densities within. Normally, when looking upward from the diaphragm and above the heart, a lucency in the retrosternal space should be seen. Instead, here is a soft tissue mass with some calcifications. A cross-sectional image like an MR or CT scan makes it easy to recognize these same abnormalities. But an MR or CT scan is not ordered in every patient that has a cough or abnormal chest film. They are ordered in order to help refine a differential diagnosis. The CT image shows the superior vena cava, the ascending aorta, a portion of the pulmonary outflow tract, and the descending thoracic aorta. The double dark circles here represent the bifurcation of the trachea into the right and left main stem bronchi, and there is an obvious lesion in the retrosternal space anterior to the great vessels. This is a heterogeneous lesion that has soft tissue attenuation, calcification or bone attenuation, and a dark area that is actually fat, not air. This mass is a triple threat. It has bone, it has fat, and it has soft tissue. The appearance of the lesion is very consistent with a teratoma, a type of germ cell tumor. That opaque density shown here is actually a tooth inside of that teratoma, which is a relatively common finding. The anterior mediastinum is the most common location for an intrathoracic teratoma. The second patient is a 25-year-old man with fatigue. The radiograph shows a lesion obliterating or silhouetting out the normal contour of the pulmonary outflow tract. Should the mass be expected in the area of the anterior or posterior mediastinum? Since the aortic knob is still visible, as well as a portion of the descending thoracic aorta, this mass is located in the anterior mediastinum, not in the posterior mediastinum. When looking at the cross-sectional CT imaging, the expected lesion is found to be in an anterior mediastinal mass. This is a mediastinal seminoma, which, like the teratoma, is a type of germ cell tumor. Both kinds of germ cell tumors may present in the retrosternal space in the anterior mediastinum. From a coronal reconstruction from the same CT, it is easy to see the inflated lung, the left ventricle, the right atrium, the liver, 
and contrast material in the stomach, multiple bowel loops in the abdomen, as well as the large soft tissue mass. The schematic highlights the location of the lesion in the area where the concavity or indentation of aortical pulmonary window would be expected. Shown on this axial CT image are the trachea, contrast material in the left innominate vein crossing over in front of the aorta to join with the right innominate vein to form the superior vena cava, the arch of the aorta, and the retrosternal soft tissue mass. Notice that this mass is composed of a single type of attenuation. It is not heterogeneous. It does not have the bone and the fat that was seen in the mediastinal teratoma. All these structures are readily visible, and they help explain what was identified on the plain film of the chest. Note this anterior mass does not touch the arch of the aorta, so the aortic arch is still visible on the image. The final case for a silhouette sign is a 25-year-old active duty man with a three-day history of dry cough. The patient is febrile and his cough has now become productive of green watery sputum. Green sputum in the presence of fever suggests that the patient has an infection. For reference is a normal chest x-ray on the right and our patient's radiograph on the left. The images are very different. Scanning the lung fields from top to bottom and from side to side the lung lobes on the normal radiograph display about the same degree of blackness or the same degree of lucency. Our patient's radiograph on the left displays a hazy opacity, but more importantly, the sharp contour or edge that should have been formed by air outlining the right atrium has been lost. The normal left heart border and normal right heart border are clearly visualized in the normal comparison example. But in the patient's radiograph, the sharp margin of the right atrium, which forms the right heart border, is lost or silhouetted out. A classic positive silhouette sign. This is a right middle lobe pneumonia. Note the opacity in the right mid lung fields wider than the surrounding lung fields, along with the loss of the normal sharp appearance of the patient's right heart border. On the lateral film, there is the normal retrosternal clear space, which was not seen in the patients with the mediastinal mass. However, in this patient, there is a roughly triangular opacity overlying the heart in the expected location of the right middle lobe of the lung. Using the silhouette sign and scanning the lung field from top to bottom, the abnormality in the location of the right middle lobe can be identified. Note also the major fissure on the inferior margin of the right middle lobe. The fissure is actually displaced upwards and concave towards the lesion. This opacity is actually smaller than the normal volume of the right middle lobe and indicates a partial collapse or volume loss of the right middle lobe. In summary, the silhouette sign should help to both identify abnormalities in lesions as well as to localize them. Once the lesion is correctly localized, for example mediastinum versus lung parenchyma versus pleural space, the differential diagnosis can be narrowed down to a more specific subset. In this module, we were able to identify and localize two anterior mediastinal tumors and a right middle lobe pneumonia.